guys and dolls and welcome back to Vintage or Tacky. Today I'm going to be doing another one of my double take tutorials and if you're not familiar with this format of video let me clue you in. So what I do is I take a palette, in today's case I'm using the Urban Decay Kristen Leanne Kaleidoscope Dream Palette and I will open it up and I'm like I can't decide what to do, oh my god I'm so ready. I, I do two different looks with one palette is what I do. So uh, today's look is very very disparate, they're very very different. Sometimes I do things that are, um, that kind of flow together a little bit better I'll, or I'll do like a more tame side and a more out there side. They're both out there today because this palette is out of this world. I really like this palette. It has a lot to offer. Um, if you are a long time Urban Decay junkie, there are, are so many of the colors in here that you'll probably have dupes for. But uh, with that said, I think that these are really good versions of those colors. I don't feel like this is sacrificing anything. There's some colors in here that are so intense, it's hard to believe. Like TRM and uh, Tajine are both like insanely pigmented. Like wow i'm so impressed they are so 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 pigmented i also want to um you know in the interest of keeping it real leo and brixton are very soft so you have to be very careful because you can see like mine are starting to look really really beat up spitfire also is really soft um actually most of the shadows in here are pretty soft so you want to kind of uh you know use a light hand or not like jam your brush in there um all the colors are really gorgeous it does come with a brush as well and i like this brush a lot i usually don't like the brushes that come in pellets but this one was quite nice i'm really excited to share this look with you guys today let me know which eyeshadow palette you'd like to see me do a double take tutorial of next and i will make it happen for you Starting out with my clean face today, the first thing I'm going to do is fill in my eyebrows. This is a NYX brow pencil in the color Espresso. I especially like this one because of the shape. It's got a kind of a weird, irregular, um, like flat, wide shape to it, which really helps me fill in my brows. And if this is driving you nuts that I'm sitting here like filling in my brows with my bangs down, I understand. <laughs> um, I like doing this because it kind of gives me an idea of where everything's going to be placed and I, I find it works out better since I now have the bangs, but if it's driving you nuts, I'm gonna part the green seas of my bangs to do my concealer today. Uh, for my concealer, the best one, you know, really for looking for a, an under brow concealer for me, it's about creating a texture that looks nice on my eyelid and nothing that's too greasy or too crepey or too dry. And the best one that I found is this Pixie by Petra Padaway Liquid Concealer. The biggest bummer of this though is that it only comes in three colors and it's three shades of beige. I mean, it's, it's not even kinda sort of, um, you know, like they have like light, medium, and dark or something like that. It is just three light skin shades. So I don't know if I'm going to try to find something that I like better than this that has, you know, a, a broader shade range or something. You guys let me know. I mean, I don't really use it as concealer, um, but I do want to find things that are more inclusive for you guys. So that's something I want to look for this year. For my primer today, I'm using the Urban Decay Primer Potion, which is a oldie but goodie. It just, it's always there for me. It's like, it's like that best friend. Like, you know, it's going to work, you know. Okay, wait, shut up. Hold up. This shadow though, this shadow, I want to show you guys like, um, see how I'm just like smearing it on? I want to show you guys kind of like a swatch that I blend out. And what's amazing about this is not only is this eyeshadow hella pigmented, and by the way, yes, there was a transition there, but I didn't add more product. It's because I was just staring at myself in the viewfinder and I thought maybe you didn't want to watch me just stare at myself. Anyway, I'm blending, blending, blending. I haven't picked up more product. I am just sitting here blending what was just kind of like a smear of the product. You see, I was not careful in the way that I smeared it on my eye. Um, and it's really impressive how beautifully this blends out. So something about this shadow is just special and I felt like it just really needed a little extra super duper shout out in this video. I am impressed with this one. I mean, look at how good that blend is. Look at how freaking good that blend is. I can't believe it. And like, I got skills, I'm not gonna lie, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, but I, I do know what I'm doing with makeup, but every now and then a shadow just really impresses me with the quality. Um, this one definitely impressed me. I'm using Stay Gold all over the lid here uh, to, you know, be my lid color. I don't know why I'm making this awkward now. So putting that all over the lid with the London Brush Company brush. And then on top of that, I'm going to take Lime Time, which is a beautiful bright lime green. By having the gold shadow down first, it does create a little bit more of a metallic look to it. Although Lime Time on its own is also quite fabulous. And I'm just using that all over the lower... Uh, lid today keeping it pretty simple because I want the the liner and the lashes that I'm going to do for this side to really be like the biggest boldest statement and just the colors themselves to be a statement. Uh, I am taking a little bit of Leo on the inner corner there just just because I wanted to use every single color in this palette to be honest and I think it looks pretty. I think it has a nice little pop there. I'm going to be using Brixton which is the other half of that duo on the other side and it's interesting because in the pan Brixton looks like it has a pink to a chrome uh, but 
whenever I put it on the skin, it has a greenish pink duochrome. It's very cool, very, very cool color. And one thing I really, I'm showing a lot of the application of this highlight because I wanted to show you guys how I did it. I applied a very small amount of it at the very peak of my underbrow and then blended it from there, patted it into the color very, very carefully. And I wanted to show you guys that beautiful duochrome and, and how th that, this is how to do a frosty highlight correctly. Uh, and this is another tip which I've shown you guys many, many times in the past. This is a matte shadow. This one happens to be from Wet n Wild. It's a matte. Uh, for me, it's a skin tone color. You could also easily use a face powder that works for you and your skin tone. And I'm using that to tone down the highlight to make it less frosty. It's a really great way to use a shimmery highlight on your brow bone without it being scary. So for my liner today, I'm using the Urban Decay Perversion Ultra Fine Liner. I got a tiny little blurb of it on my uh, actual shadow there, but I covered it up. Don't worry about it. I fixed it. So I'm drawing the line straight out. Then I tuck it back in uh, along the top edge to create the nice smooth line. And I'm going to go over that several times. So don't worry if like in the first swipe, you don't get it perfect. If at first you don't succeed, pick yourself up and try again. Anyway, I will stop singing. I will not torture you in that way today. Once I have that line kind of uh, figured out how I want it, I will then fill it in, make sure it's nice and clean. For my bottom lashes today, I am using Deep Purple from Stila, one of my all-time favorite liners. Like, long-time viewers know this has been one of my favorites. This is like my second or third time buying this eyeliner. It is so good. Beautiful burgundy shade. There's just nothing quite like it. Over the top of that, I am blending Corona Shadow from the palette. Oh my god, Corona is gorgeous. I wish I could have done more with it in this look. Um, then I'm using the Perversion Pencil Liner for my top and bottom water lines filling that in. I'm using 13th floor to add some depth and, and create a nice transition between that outer um, wing and then the lower lash line so that it doesn't look banged off with my particular eye shape. This is something I need to be mindful of. Troublemaker mascara. A little bit of that. And I also added a bit of tagine, um, added a little bit more intensity to the outer corner and then ran that along the lower lash line, which is why um, the bottom looks very orange, but it's Corona tagine or tahine. I don't know why I keep saying tahine. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. For my lashes today, I'm using a pair of Imperial Lashes from Sugar Pill. They have these beautiful little blobbies on the end, these little sparkly rhinestone things. They also have a rhinestone band, and this is actually two that I stacked on top of each other to get maximum intensity. I wasn't really feeling the sparkliness, so I covered it up with some of the Perversion Liner from Urban Decay. Love the way that this turned out. It's simple, it's beautiful, but of course, this is a double take tutorial, so let's rewind it and show you another look. Okay, so here we are going in for the second side. This is uh, some tape, some garden variety scotch tape that I'm sticking to the outer corner of my eye to create a clean edge. This is actually one of my most old school tricks that I used to use all the time. It's quite popular here on YouTube now. It's always funny um, to kind of revisit my, you know, old techniques and stuff that I haven't used in a while and be like, oh yeah, this was great. Why did I stop doing this? It creates a nice clean edge for something like this. Here I'm packing on, uh, well I was packing on dye, now I'm taking tahine and blending that over. And these are colors that look really beautiful together. Orange and purple are always, I think, a really nice combination, but they can get a little muddy. So you wanna be careful about making sure that you are blending them in the right combination. You'll have to come back with a little bit of the purple or a little bit of the orange. Um, I'm putting the orange down actually to be a base for Spitfire. Uh, so after I put on the orange, I am then going over that beautiful duochrome pink and oh wow, it's just so beautiful. I, 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 I don't know if this is weird because it's like my own application. I'm like, wow, look how great that looks. Uh, but truly, I think that this is a palette where the colors seem to have purpose and they seem to flow together and work together really nicely. For my lid today, uh, I'm using a bit of a black base for TRM, which is the most amazing eyeshadow. Oh my God, do you guys see this? Oof, oh, it's so beautiful. So if you remember the Pat McGrath Ultramarine pigment that I lost my mind over. This is very, 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 very similar, if not nearly, it's basically identical. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know that I would be able to pick up the difference if I played one on one side and one on the other. Uh, now I'm taking a little bit of dye to mix with the same, you know, brush that I used to apply the blue, just to make sure that I'm getting a nice transition between those two colors. Um, it turned out really beautiful. Look at that blend. Yay, very happy with how that turned out today. I'm using a little bit of Brixton for my highlight area as well on this side. I really enjoyed doing that today. I haven't done a sparkly highlight in years, and you know what? 
I don't know if it's going to come back, if it's going to be, you know, a new trend or anything, but I think it looks lovely and it's really fun to do sometimes. And again, what I'm doing is I'm patting it. I'm being very delicate about how I'm introducing the highlight to the transitional colors, being very mindful. So you can see patting, being very delicate, um, almost making it like an overlay rather than a blend between the two. Um, and then I took a little bit of Spitfire again just to make sure that that wasn't getting swallowed up in the whole thing. That's true of any look. You really just, a lot of these delicate things end up getting cutting, cut out of tutorials, but they are important. When I went to remove the mess of the blue shadow, it just smeared. So you're definitely going to want to use a makeup remover. I use Bioderma. I think micellar water is great because you can just put makeup right on top of it. And you can see there was a considerable amount of fallout from that blue and it does stain a little bit. Around my eyes, there's still some blue that I just couldn't get off. Uh, for my liner today, I am again using the Urban Decay Perversion Ultra Fine or Fine Tip or whatever it is. It's their liquid liner and it's fabulous and I'm just doing the thinnest line of black just to make the whole look polished because I have blonde eyelashes and without it, it's a little like there it looks like there's a gap. For my lower lash line, I'm using Freak Eyeliner. I'm taking that all across because the part that I'm going to put Lime Time over, which is what I'm doing right here in the inner corner, I'm just going to make it more enhanced. It's just going to make it so much more like pow, impactful. Uh, without having to use as much of the shadow uh, and then in the outer portion I'm going to use low um, which is a beautiful or LCW I'm sorry not low <laughs> LCW uh, which is a beautiful beautiful aqua it's gonna make it a little bit lighter being on top of that lighter green shadow now in this inner corner here I originally put stay gold eventually I'm gonna mix a little bit of I think Leo or bricks and I can't remember and I actually liked it better when it just had stay gold so if you're creating this look at home I would just use stay gold in that inner corner so for my foundation today, I'm using the Too Faced Hangover Primer. I like this one, it's nice and hydrating. I have dry skin, so it's kind of a match made in heaven for me. I've been really liking it lately. For my foundation, I'm using the Urban Decay All Nighter, which is a very matte, very full coverage foundation, mixed with the Urban Decay Aura Mixing Medium, which helps to sheer out foundation, or you can use it as a highlighter. It's a pretty multi-purpose product. I used about half and half of each, and it definitely sheared out the foundation, and I'm so pleased with how this turned out because I no longer really like very matte, super pigmented foundation. I do tend to like something that looks very kind of natural and youthful and glowy, so this kind of gave me the best of both worlds. I got coverage, but I also got a beautiful glow to my skin. For my concealer, I'm using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer. Again, another one of my favorite drugstore finds. Oh my god, this is so good, you guys. It's so freaking good. Uh, the texture of it, the color match for me, I've never had a color match quite as good as that. Uh, the Fenty Beauty Press Powder is what I'm using under my eyes. I love this stuff for under the eye. It has a nice texture. For my blush on the orangey green side, I am using uh, Bang Blush from Urban Decay. And for the other side, I'm going to be using Quickie, which is sort of like the hot pink counterpoint. So uh, kind of use two blushes that were sort of, sort of kind of similar. Maybe at first glance, you might not have even known that I used two different blushes, but now you know. Belle Biv DeVoe. Oh, now you know. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. For my lips, I'm doing sort of like a split screen thing at first. So on one side, I had Cloud9. Now I'm applying Spellbound uh, to the other side. Uh, I ended up blending them together, which we will see in a moment. But first, let's do the highlight. Uh, this is the Chris and Leanne Highlight Palette. The two darker shades in this don't work for me, but that middle shade, that gorgeous, gorgeous, oh, look at that. It's so pretty. It's, oh, I love it. Anyway, uh, moving on back to the lips, we are blending in between those two to get that beautiful ombre lip look. This was fun. This was really fun. I think I might do this ombre lip thing more often. I don't know why I haven't done it more in the past, but look how cool that is. Like when you shift, it almost looks like it's got like a dual chrome look to it. It's very, very cool. I love doing these double take tutorials. I think it's such a fun way to explore a palette, especially something like this where it's super colorful. I was able to use every single shadow and instead of doing just like arm swatches or anything, I was able to show you guys how each and every one of these shadows performs in real life, like how they go onto the skin. Um, in particular, Tajine and uh, TRM are just so incredibly pigmented, but they're all really beautiful. They all look gorgeous on the skin. Uh, none of them are overly textured or like crappy pigmentation or anything. It's all really great. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, I might be vintage or tacky. Just be your own kind of beautiful. And I will see you guys in my next video. Mwah.